Ah, it started. Okay. All right, guys. So my name's Jay Wilson, your neighborhood friendly technical success manager. It's like week two of coronavirus land and we're all on lockdown. And uh, I'm trying to keep to my promise to answer one question on the Domo Dojo per day. And uh, I've been remiss. This is the second day that I missed it. Well, technically first today because Friday I did a recording, but it didn't have audio. What a mess. So I get to record it again. Anyway, if you're not familiar with the Domo Dojo, please get familiar. Post your questions about Domo there. There's a, there's a huge network of, of Domo enthusiasts around the world who are using the product to do really amazing things. And there's people like me who want nothing better than to see you be successful and will make time to answer your questions. So who knows? Anyway, so the Wizard of Oz posted this question about how to calculate usage percent. I'm going to call it engagement rates. Um, while I'm going through this video. Um, but the general gist of it is, is it looks like the Wizard of Oz has a series of content. Um, the, and they are also measuring when somebody engages with that content. But the question that they're struggling with is, how do I measure engagement rates? Like I had six pieces of content and I had three users. What percent of people engaged with certain things? What's popular? And I guess one of the challenges there is it's, you know, it's obviously easy to measure what has been engaged with, but that question of what hasn't been engaged with can be a more difficult question. So um, I recreated the Wizards of Oz's data here in Domo uh, using some fake data. Let's assume we're talking about blog posts about Power BI Tableau or whatever, and then I've got my users. And again, to illustrate the problem, if I click on, let's say I want to look at data filtered by um, region, all I can see now is the actual engagement in that region. What isn't, what you don't see is the fact that, hey, I had a total of six pieces of content that people in Germany had an opportunity to engage with. Or the other thing you don't see is I have a network of, let's say, a, a distribution list of four or five people, and really only Tina is engaging with my content. So how can I build some so sort of reporting that gives me the ability to see, to measure all of my opportunities to engage with someone and how successful I was with reaching them? We're going to have to use a, a design pattern that I called building the universe. Yeah, I know it sounds kind of hokey, but... The idea is I want to create, if I'm going to do percent of total, then I want my denominator to be one row for every opportunity that I had to engage. And then the numerator will be every time I actually engaged with someone. So in this ETL, um, this bottom half here will represent every opportunity, one row per content per user one row per opportunity to engage. And the numerator will be every time somebody actually clicked on my content. If it sounds like this doesn't resonate with you, um, I've used this use case, um, obviously in the marketing use case, but also we were looking at, um, we were doing a market research um, we were doing market research analysis, and the question was, hey, what, what content is popular? What are people engaged? What, what brands are popular? Um, we, can, we use this for a... I'm not going to get into it. There's a lot of use cases where this will apply. If you're interested, give me a call. Let me know. I'll talk you through some more specific use cases. I'm not just going to put that out on the internet. Anyway, um, one row per content. So how do I define content? Content is just the first two columns of my data set. What was the blog ID and what was the topic about? This, you know, you would have a dimension table that has attributes about your blog post. You would remove duplicates and then you would have one row per content. You'll do the same thing for your users. You'd say, where's my user dimension? What are the attributes of my user? And then from the data set provided, how do I make sure I only have the valid users? In this case, we said, well, I only want rows where the user ID is not null, and then I'll remove the duplicates. To create one row per user per content, 
I'll add a join column with a fixed value of 1 on both sets of data. That way, when I do my inner join, this is, creates what's called a Cartesian product. It's also called a cross apply or a cross join. Basically, I'm multiplying all of the rows in data set 1 by all of the rows in data set 2. Three users, six pieces of content, grand total, 18 rows. My denominator will again be a fixed value of 1. I want the sum of the denominator to be all of the opportunities to engage, which of course is going to be 18. I should run preview while I'm talking. Here I'm generating my numerator. My numerator is the actual engagement. It's the fact when somebody engaged with my content. So it'll look something like this. One row per user ID and content ID where the library ID is not null. Why library ID? Because in this example, the library ID is the primary key for the user engagement table or the user engagement data. This time I add a constant of usage numerator equals one. Again, down here, I have one row per user per piece of content. I have 18 rows. Up here, I have six rows. One row every time somebody read my blog post, let's say. This time when I do my join, hey Google, turn off my alarm, please. I need Google to keep me on track. Um, this time when I do my join, I join on content ID and user ID, pull it all together, then I'll replace any nulls in my numerator with the number zero because I don't want any zero in my measurements. And then my final data set, again, I'll have 18 rows of which if J engaged with the content, the numerator will be one. But for this piece of content, J did not engage. The numerator is zero. Notice the library ID is null because J did not engage with the content. Okay, how does that all look like in a card? In a card, you get something like this. So again, I had a total of six pieces of content, two plus three plus one, spread across the topics Power BI Tableau and so on. I have two engagements with my content out of all of my three users. So if I have two pieces of content, two pieces of engagement, sorry, two pieces of content, three users, I had six opportunities to engage. So two divided by six is 33%. Same thing for Power BI. I had two people read my blog post and I had three blogs. So I had a total of nine opportunities, right? Again, three users times three blog posts is nine opportunities. Nine opportunities divided by two actual moments of engagement, that's a 22% engagement rate. What I really appreciate about this is usage percent is basic math. It's the sum of the numerator divided by the sum of denominator. There's no count distincts. I hate count distincts with a fiery passion because count distinct does not scale as your data size gets huge. What I also really appreciate about this is if I filter on a region, um, what can I glean from here? Looks like I have two users. I have two users in the United States, which means, how many users do I actually have? Sorry, J and Tom. I have two users in the United States. I have two pieces of content. Two times two is four opportunities. I have two users in the United States, three pieces of content, six opportunities. Only one person engaged with my content. So one divided by four is 25%. Out of six pieces of content, only one out of two users engaged, sorry, sorry. out of six opportunities, only one user engaged. So I have 17% engagement rate. Um, if it helps, I'll do a little count, a cheeky count distinct. I know I said don't use count distinct. Um, okay. 
Here we go. Hopefully this math makes it a little clearer. 2 times 2 is 4 opportunities. 3 times 2 is 6 opportunities. 1 times 2 is 2 opportunities. How many actual engagements did I have? 1. 1 divided by 4 is 25, and so on. Anyway, um, that's all I've got time for right now. Wizard of Oz, I hope that helps you move forward on this project. My name's Jay Wilson. I'm a technical success manager at Domo. You can reach out to me via email at jae.wilson at domo.com or post a question on the Domo Dojo. Make sure to mention me, um, and I'll see if I can be of some help. Good luck. Have fun. Catch you guys later.